I am supposed to um, introduce our speaker this evening, Goosenight Man. How are you? Is that what you're called? Uh, my name is Daniel Carter. Okay, I'm going to read your bio. Go for it. My name is Daniel Carter. I've lived just outside of La Vista, surrounded by native landscapes for 15 by 19 years. I spent K through 12 at La Vista High School, or in the school district, and spent two of my years in high school as an active Leo. From age two toward, I have maintained a fascination with animals and life on Earth. And this fascination has manifested itself in a number of ways. I've managed a collection of dozens of exotic animals, run an educational YouTube channel where I teach kids and adults about the natural world. The planet we live on is infested with life. Creeping, crawling, slithering life. Once upon a time, everything we did revolved around the natural world. But now, there are billions of us. And we, as a species, have never strayed further from our roots. Even so, some of us continue to slip through the cracks. I'm not scared of any animal, no matter the number of teeth, claws, or legs. My only directive is to reconnect you with the wild, to defend the creatures that need it most, and to do my part to preserve the biodiversity of our remarkable world. My name is Daniel Carter, and you're watching Afro Herb Keeper. So, here we have Daniel Carter with his snakes. Yes. <laughs> Howdy. How are you doing? Uh, I'm pretty nervous, but I have my notes and I have all my snakes, so just bear with me here. My name is Daniel Carter. I've lived here for 14 years. I grew up at Lago Vista ISD, basically. I live technically right outside the city limits, but um, I, have, I have grown up in this area, surrounded by the wildlife who live here for a very long time. Okay, so how many of you are afraid of snakes? That's about half of the people in the room. I'm gonna check this real quick just to make sure it's yeah, it's going okay. All right. Um, I'm recording this for posterity. So about half the room is afraid of snakes. So a fear of snakes is very natural. It's an instinctive thing. Uh, fear is a very basic emotion. And when you are afraid of something, it makes you act irrationally. So the leading cause of snake bite, I would say, is actually people who are afraid of snakes doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. So for this, uh, what is a snake? I have a snake in this bag. Uh, can anybody tell me what a snake is? It has, it has scales, it lays eggs. It's a reptile, that's right. So let me take this guy out of this bag. We have a wide selection of snakes here today for you folks. We have four, technically six, native species and two non-native species. So, what is a snake? A snake is a reptile, and who can tell me what a reptile is? Vegetable, mineral? It's an animal. So a snake, above all else, is an animal, and it behaves just like one. In this bag, we have one of such animals. This. This is called a ball python. Uh, this one is probably significantly cuter than any of the other snakes here tonight, you know, just by uh, comparison. So this is a snake from Africa. You're not going to find this in the, uh, in the wilds of Lago Vista, I hope. What I want you to focus on tonight is the behavior of the snakes that I am holding. Um, as I mentioned, these are animals. So many people are afraid of snakes that they see them in more of a, a monstrous light. They are, in actuality, just another kind of animal. So this one is a ball python. It's from Africa. As you can see, uh, as I mess with it, it's not acting aggressively at all, is it? What is it doing? He's just investigating. Um, he's got a little mind going in there. He's trying to figure out where he is and what's going on. He's wrapping himself around my wrist because he's trying to hold on. He doesn't want to fall. So this is a ball python. Uh, I 
have a few things to pass around today. This is not one of them, um, but I will. You can you can pet her later if you want. I have four, five, six species of native snakes here tonight. This is our first. This is the most common snake species in Lago Vista, and it is completely harmless. We're going to take her out. Of all the snakes here today, I, I know I said harmless, I mean that she doesn't have any venom. Of all the snakes here today, this is the bitiest one, or the only bitey one, I should say. This girl is called a western rat snake. Uh, they're also commonly known as the Texas rat snake or the chicken snake on account of their tendency to inhabit coops. This one is about five and a half feet long. Uh, she was biting me earlier when I was messing with her. She bit me like six times. It hardly hurts. It's a snake. Its teeth are very small. If it has venom, then it's going to hurt really bad. Um, this one is harmless. This one is non-venomous, and it is actually a beneficial species. What is the job of a rat snake? Can anybody guess? Yeah. It eats rats. Uh, it eats rats and mice and voles and rodents. Uh, it also eats chicken eggs. Uh, they are very partial to that, but so are we, so can you blame them? Um, this one's pretty big. I actually pulled this one out of somebody's landscape netting a few months ago. Uh, if you get a close look at it later, you can see that about right here on its neck, it has a injury. Uh, it looked a lot worse a few months ago. It's been healing, but I had to pull this girl out of somebody's trash and cut her free where she had been stuck for a few days. She is probably going back to the wild when it warms up. And don't worry, she won't be out there envenomating anybody. She is just going to go hunt some rats and mice. So this is a western rat snake. You'll see, you'll notice, that this snake just wants to be left alone. It wishes I was not doing this with it right now. And uh, which direction is this snake headed? Towards us. It's headed towards you. Uh, a common misconception is that snakes chase people. There is not a single snake species in North America that will chase you. That's not a joke. I've been working with snakes for a long time, and so have a lot of other people. There are no snakes in North America that will actually go after you and chase you. Um, this is a misconception. It happens pretty easily because the snake is already moving in the direction of the people. It doesn't know any of you are there. Uh, it just wants to get away from me, and that's the easiest route to, to go about that. Um, so it's not going to actually know you, it's not going to detect you until it's actually right up against you. Um, if you don't move, it probably won't tell you're there at all. So this is a western rat snake. This is the most common and most harmless, well, not most harmless. This is the most common species of snake in Lago Vista, and she is harmless. Uh, as you can see, hasn't bit me once. She's gonna, we're going to try and get her back into this tub. This might be a, a process. What, what pattern would you call that on her back? Oh, uh, okay. Good way to, excuse me, good way to identify this snake. Um, some people might confuse this for a rattlesnake by the pattern on its back. Uh, the only species of rattlesnake that we have here is called the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. There's a big shed, or skin, of one on the table in front of here. You could describe this pattern here as uh, more of a saddle than a diamond. And as you might have noted, it definitely does not have a rattle. That should be the first thing you check for. Yeah. How do you know it's a female? Uh, I don't actually know the gender of this snake, but based on the size, I'm going to guess it's a female. The, the females tend to get bigger because they have to carry the eggs. Okay, this is a western rat snake. Uh, how many of you have seen that snake before, out of curiosity? A handful of people. It is very common in our area. So is this one. This is our second species, it is also native. This is the jewel of the Texas Hill Country. This is called an Eastern Black Neck Garter Snake. So if you, if you know what a garter snake is, you know this one's harmless. This is about as large as this species gets. I've had this individual for about 10 years. I caught her in my garage. So this is an Eastern Black Neck Garter Snake. This one's a little more timid than the last one, so she's gonna be trying to hide in my afro. Um, as you can see, she's got this beautiful orange stripe running down her back. This is one of the most beautiful species of garter snake in the country, uh, and it lives right in your backyard. She is called the Black Neck Garter Snake because she has these black splotches on her neck and all the way down her body. Um, the diet of this animal is mostly frogs and toads and fish, and they will occasionally eat mice and rats. 
This is about as big as they get. And also, if you see one of these and uh, you need me to come relocate it for you, she needs a boyfriend. <laughs> so this is the Eastern Black Knight Garter Snake. This one's name is Mort, by the way. It lives only in and around the hill country. So the Western Rat Snake, the Eastern Black Knight Garter Snake, two beautiful, common, beneficial species from the Texas hill country. Over here in this jar, this snake is not alive. This is just another example of a, a native species. This is a rough green snake. It was killed by a dog. Um, this is a small species of arboreal snake. It lives in the trees. Uh, it is harmless, non-venomous. When they're alive, they're bright green. These eat bugs, mostly. So we have about, uh, we have one or two dozen native species of snakes. And uh, most of them are harmless, non-venomous. There are only three, okay, the first snake I brought out is halfway out of the bag. Let's, let, me, let me tie this shut real quick. So we have one or two dozen native species of snakes. The rat snake is one of the biggest in our area. The rough green snake is one of the smallest. There are also plenty of little tiny snakes that you'd find in your garden under rocks. There are only three species of venomous snake native to Lago Vista, and they are all fairly easy to identify. The most common one that I see is the western diamondback rattlesnake. So this is, was, one such rattlesnake. This was, I believe this animal was killed by a high schooler, uh, this, this hole right here is from a shotgun. Um, yeah, yeah, anyways, somehow I ended up with this skin, and you guys can touch this if you want, we can pass it around. Uh, this is the skin of a western diamondback rattlesnake. This is probably the most common venomous snake in our area. And uh, if you like this, then you'll love the baby one. This is... Uh, maybe a year and a half old Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. The scientific name of this animal is Crotalus atrox, if you were curious. So, Texans have a long and complicated history with the rattlesnake. Some people admire them. Uh, in some places in Texas, you can go out and go to the uh, Rattlesnake Roundup, where they, they capture these guys en masse by the thousands and kill them and skin them and eat them. Uh, I have I have complicated opinions on the matter, but this is a baby western diamondback rattlesnake. These are native to your area. You might encounter this snake in your backyard. We'll hope not. We're going to talk about how you can prevent that from happening uh, a little bit later in the program. What's the lifespan? The lifespan of a western diamondback rattlesnake is around 30, 35 years. Um, they live and grow slower than a mammal of similar size because they have a slower metabolism. I saw another hand. Yeah. What's the benefit to the environment of I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Great question. Uh, she she has every idea about where I'm going next. Um, okay. So the Western Diamondback rattlesnake is infamous. It is an iconic Texas species. The rattle, the fangs, "Don't tread on me" is its catchphrase. And uh, true to the, so many Texans forget not to tread on this animal. Um, the rattlesnake is infamous, but it is also misunderstood. So you saw the snakes that I had out earlier. They wanted nothing to do with me. They were trying to leave, flee that way. Um, this thing, if I took it out of the cup, it would do the exact same thing. This particular snake has actually never struck at me once. Um, not through the glass, not anything. It always tries to flee uh, if, if its rattle doesn't intimidate me, which it, it never does, because I'm used to it. No, sir. This, this snake has a, a, a sizable vivarium at my house. I mean, it, it was still eating here. Um, How long does it take for a diamondback to become fully mature? Uh, it would take about four or five years. This one is about a year and a half old. Do your snakes know you? Uh, do they know you? Uh, um, they recognize me. They know I'm the one who brings them food. <laughs> uh, but no, this snake behaves towards me as it would behave towards any other human. There's a distinguishment I'd like to make between the words defensive and aggressive. So a snake, as any other wild animal would, always acts in defense of itself. It wants to preserve its own life, as anybody would, but it will not, as I said, go out of its way to attack you, believe it or not. Um, 
Um, so this animal, if you were to come across it in the wild, the safest and easiest thing to do, simply turn around and walk away. If you don't bother the snake, it will leave. It will go on its merry way. It wants nothing to do with you or your pets or your kids. Um, however, if the snake is not out in the middle of the wilderness, you could either uh, take action into your own hands and use like a garden hose to push it off the, uh, off the pavement or out into somewhere else. You could use a trash can, or you could call me, and I will come out there and relocate that snake for you. But why would you want a rattlesnake in your neighborhood in the first place? What is the benefit to having a rattlesnake around? Obviously, there's the detriment of the venom, but if you treat this animal with respect and give it distance, then you don't really have to worry about that. Um, the benefit of a rattlesnake is the same as any other snake. This animal eats somewhere in the range of 60 to 70 rodents every year. And rodents, they carry diseases. They carry things like Lyme disease. Uh, they are a pest. They get in your pantry. They get in your crops. Uh, if you have rattlesnakes around or other snakes, uh, and I, I might say if you have non-venomous snakes around, it's a good sign that they have outcompeted some of the venomous ones, so you could be thankful to them. This is a common myth. Um, baby rattlesnakes, people say that they either are more venomous or they can't control their venom glands as well as an adult can. This is just actually not true. Um, this snake is born as a perfect miniature replica of an adult and it knows how to act like one. So that is the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. It's the most common venomous snake in our area, even by, or by, by the standards of the snakes that we have in the area, it's not that common, just because so many people go out and kill them. Um, this other snake in this cup is another venomous one. Actually, before I do this, would you guys like to pass this guy around? No. no. no? I promise he can't get out, it's taped shut. Does anybody, would anybody like to? Yes. Yeah? All right, I'll bring him over here. Okay, so that's one. We have three venomous snake species in our area. The easiest way to identify a western diamondback rattlesnake is by the rattle. Uh, they also have little zebra stripes on their tail and the diamonds running down their back. It's pretty easy to identify a rattlesnake if you know what you're looking at. The second snake in this cup is another venomous species. It is a pit viper. Can anybody guess? what venomous snakes we have around here. It's a cottonmouth. So this is a western cottonmouth. This one is a similar age, around 1.5 years. This is a snake that lives in and around creeks and streams. It preys mostly on amphibians and fish. Uh, so it, it's not going after as many rodents as a rattlesnake would. It can eat a more varied diet. They actually also love cicadas for some reason. The cottonmouth, is actually very, very rare in our area. The only place that I know of, uh, that I've heard of, where they've been sighted is Cow Creek in the surrounding area. That's actually where this one is from. Many people will say that they have seen one on Lake Travis. A professional has not documented one on Lake Travis for over 40 years. There are many native non-venomous snakes that are very frequently misidentified as the cottonmouth, but Nobody has documented one on Lake Travis for a very long time, so if you think you see one on Lake Travis, it is much more likely to be a non-venomous blotched water snake. However, if you leave it alone, what difference does it make? So this is the uh, western cottonmouth. Would anybody like to hold this one? Will, will, a, will a cottonmouth bite into the water? Uh, generally, if it's swimming around, it it, they're not going to bite unless they're provoked. So if you don't grab it or you don't step on it, you should be okay. So just watch your step if you're out in the wilderness and uh, if you see a snake, just avoid it. Yeah? Don't step on it. Did you have a question? Uh, do they swim underwater or only on top? Uh, they can actually do both. Um, both cottonmouths and normal water snakes can swim both on top and underneath the water. So that's not an awesome way to identify them. Uh, this snake, more than the other two species of native venomous snake, is a little harder to identify to the untrained eye. Um, obviously it has that bright white cotton mouth, but to get it to open its mouth at you, you've already done something wrong. You've, you've aggravated it. Um, the best way to identify this snake is that it has sort of a pointed face, 
Uh, some non-venomous snakes, I should say, will actually flatten their heads in the shape of a triangle to mimic a venomous snake because they think that you're going to leave them alone. Then you get the shovel, and then we all know where it goes next. Um, so head shape and eye shape are actually not great ways to identify snakes because they can change both of those things. Western cottonmouth. Where's my rattlesnake at, by the way? Who's got it? Over there. You want to start passing this one around also? Okay. Uh, I assure you, this is this. They are they are properly contained. I followed all the very strict. I, I didn't follow any guidelines. They're taped in little plastic cups, but they're not. They're just animals. Like I said, they can't. They don't have super strength or anything. <laughs> so we have three species of venomous snake in uh, Lago Vista. We have the western diamondback rattlesnake and the western cottonmouth. Although that one only really lives in Cow Creek and the surrounding area. So if you go up towards the uh, National Wildlife Refuge, you might see one. You're very unlikely to see one on Lake Travis. The third species we have is immediately recognizable. What is this? This is a Texas coral snake, the infamous red and yellow killifella. I'm here to tell you tonight that that rhyme is partially inaccurate because there are no modern deaths attributable to this species of coral snake. Um, the Texas coral snake is an elapid, like a cobra. Um, it is a very shy snake. As you can see, it's not very big. It doesn't have those big piercing fangs like a, a pit viper, like a rattlesnake does. So it actually has to chew to envenomate its prey. So this snake, it doesn't have much defense against predators. It's just about the same in terms of its body as these non-venomous snakes on the table in front of me. So it can't it's, it's not great at inflicting damage. It's just, it mainly uses its venom for going after its prey. Uh, so if you see this snake in the wild, you treat it like all of the other snakes on the table, you leave it alone, and you walk away. If you have this snake in your house, call me and I'll come get it. I should say, the coral snake is a very docile and passive species of snake. Uh, even when people are messing with them, handling them, they are unlikely to bite. I can't recommend this for obvious reasons. Um, but it just goes to show that, like I said, they are just animals. They don't want anything to do with us, and usually, biting is a last resort for a snake. The rattlesnake, it's got his intimidation tactic with the, uh, the rattle and everything, the cotton mouth opens his mouth. These guys are brightly colored to denote that you shouldn't mess with them. And uh, just as with the snakes that mimic the rattlesnake and the cottonmouth, there are snakes not native to here that mimic the coral snake because they know if they look like that, then they're not going to get messed with. Unfortunately, it usually backfires on them when they're dealing with humans. The subject of the talk, and the most important thing I'm going to say tonight, uh, what to do if you get bit by a venomous snake. Uh, this is the snake bite prevention talk. We're going to talk about what happens after you get bit, after you've messed with the snake or accidentally step on one. So if you're bitten by a snake, the most important thing to do is keep calm. <laughs> uh, as, as, as hard as that may be at the time. You want to reduce your uh, heart rate and just keep your blood circulating through your body. You don't want, actually, a tourniquet to restrict the blood flow because that will, not only will it not prevent the blood from uh, escaping, it will actually just reduce the amount of blood that gets into the affected limb and it causes a whole host of other problems. You don't want to restrict it, but you do want to keep it underneath your heart if you can. Just keep the bite lower than your heart. Like, lay down if you need to. So if you're bit by a venomous snake, keep, keep calm. Dial 911. Uh, that should be the first thing that you do. And uh, just stay put, wait for, wait for help to come, and try to stay calm, stay hydrated, do what you can to maintain a normal uh, bodily stasis. Things that don't work, like I said, tourniquet, no good. And uh, those snake bite uh, suction kits, the venom suction kits that they sell, those are also no good. They actually do not work. Uh, this has been validated many, many times over. Don't waste your money on them. Just stay calm, dial 911, and let the professionals deal with it. Um, you should try to identify what kind of snake bit you, though, for their sake. What can you do to prevent them from coming into your yard? Second, is there a particular time of day or night that they are out? Luckily for you, that's the next bullet point. <laughs> um, okay, so you don't want to get bit by a venomous snake. If you do, now you hopefully know what to do. 
How do you keep them out of your yard and off your property in the first place? Uh, well, we live in Lago Vista, which is a beautiful place. It is one of the most scenic areas in Texas, and we have our own unique cast of beautiful wildlife. We have roadrunners, we have deer, we have, uh, well, I was gonna say we have feral hogs, but those aren't beautiful or native. Um, we have roadrunners, we have deer, we have foxes, we have lots of skunks on Boggy and 1431 lately. Um, and we also have snakes. So, since we live in Lago Vista and we have all this beautiful wildlife, we are inclined to welcome it to our yard. We want to see it all the time. If you are welcoming wildlife onto your property, in your yard, you are also going to welcome the wildlife that doesn't have legs. So if you want to keep snakes off your property in the first place, you have to make this uninviting to them. And to do that, you have to make it uninviting to what's going to draw them there, which is their prey. So. If you have a bunch of scrap piles in your yard, you want to clear that stuff away. That's a hiding place for both prey animals and snakes. If you have a water source on the ground that could be fostering prey, uh, you would want to get, get rid of that because that could attract toads and frogs and then they would attract snakes. If you want to attract toads and frogs, which I know I do, um, then you unfortunately will just have to deal with the snakes, but you can learn to love them if you, if you really put yourself to it. So clear piles of scrap from your yard, remove water sources, and remove food sources. Obviously, if you have like a sack of deer corn or something spilling out the side, it's going to attract mice. So keep food and everything properly secured. Don't attract rats and mice, and you won't attract snakes. That's the best way not to have to deal with a snake. If you do have to deal with it, like I said, a garden hose is a great option. Just spray them away. Uh, I would resort to a shovel or a shotgun last because that puts you within striking distance of the snake. I mean, if you have a shovel, not if you have a shotgun, but I would prefer, personally, from a, a personal standpoint, I would prefer you didn't go blow the head off the snake. But yeah, we have a lot of snakes on the table, don't we? <laughs> well, actually, the other exit is that bag right there. Oh yeah, I haven't opened this one. We're saving this one. Uh, who's got my cotton mouth, by the way? Right there. Right there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, roadrunners are an awesome species. Um, little dinosaur birds. They, they, they eat anything. They will beat a rattlesnake to death and then swallow it whole. Um, they also eat lizards and rodents. They are birds of prey. They're just more so restricted to the ground. Question. Yep. You're, you're hiking through the woods. Yes. Or you're on the lake like Kevin's hiking through the woods. He gets bit by a snake. Mm -hmm. He's five miles out. Uh -huh. He can't get to a professional. What's the best thing that he can do to get him back before some, something happens that's really bad? Call 911. Let them know what's up. Uh, you mean he has no service? Yeah, he's out there in the he's woods. He's just out there? Well, good luck. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the best thing that Kevin can do is to stay calm, uh, try and, and rest as much as he can, but try to make his way back to civilization. Um, if you go out into the wilderness, you should really bring a, a contact for the outside world with you. Oh, yeah, so keeping snakes off your property. Make it unappealing to their prey. Make it unappealing to them. Uh, what doesn't work, mothballs. It is actually illegal to dump mothballs in Texas because they leach toxins into the soil. Um, and they have absolutely no effect on snakes. Neither do horsehair ropes or uh, snake away. Snake away and other snake repellents, they have no scientific basis, they don't work. You can Google images of it, you can just find a rattlesnake sitting between two piles of snake away, it just, it doesn't work. It's a waste of money again. Um, you have to treat them as other animals, they aren't gonna magically go away if you put chemicals in your yard. Um, they are just animals, and that's what I want you to take away from this. If you leave them alone, they don't want to defend them, or they don't want to attack you, they just want to be left alone, and if you go after them and mess with them, they will defend themselves. Yes? She yes, asked the question, time of day. Time of day. Uh, the, the snakes are normally active. Right. So in the winter, they're not going to be nearly as active. Uh, a weather event could bring them out, like they could get flooded out of their burrows if, uh, a, a whole bunch of rain were to fall at the same time. Uh, snakes prefer, snakes like it sunny and hot usually. So you're likely to see them in the spring and summer and going into the fall. 
Uh, and you will see different species at different times of year because they all have a different niche and a different role. And their prey is active at certain times of year also. So yeah, if I want you to take away anything from this, it is that snakes are just animals. Uh, if you encounter one in the wild, the safest thing to do for you is just to turn around and walk away. If you step on one and it bites you, then uh, the, the, the most important thing to do, stay calm, call 911, don't apply a tourniquet, don't use a suction kit, I don't just take out your blood and you need that. Um, just stay calm and call 911. To keep snakes off your property, clear brush piles, clear food, clear water, make it unappealing to their prey and you will make it unappealing to them. Uh, but if you, want, if you want to attract that native wildlife, then uh, if you see one, I can come and deal with it for you, you know, yeah. You mentioned you, uh, you feed them, you raise your own food. Yes, sir. Uh, you feed them, this is a two-part question, are they alive or dead, and can these be gotten at uh, Whole Foods? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can get them at PetSmart and uh, Petco and uh, various pet stores. Uh, you know, if you're interested in keeping your own snakes, that's a subject we can discuss more in depth. Uh, there, are, there are many different ways that people do it. Okay, let's see what's in this, in this, this big heavy pillowcase here. Does anybody have any guesses? It's not native. We've gone over all the native snakes. Don't we have copperheads? Well, <laughs> Don't we have copperheads around here? Uh, we do not have copperheads in Lago Vista. You can find them a bit north and a bit south of us, but they do not occur where we live. Okay. In the big bag is the big snake. Uh, the, pre the first one we brought out was a python. This one is called a hog island boa constrictor. She is a dwarf subspecies of boa constrictor. At the moment, she's about five and a half feet. She will reach about seven feet as an adult. This is my most docile and uh, my best show snake. So you guys can pet this one if you're so inclined. I, I just brought her because she's charismatic. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Would you like to take him? She is heavy, yeah. I'll help you all if you can stand up here. Uh, okay, so this is Scylla. She's a hog island boa constrictor. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this talk. That's pretty much it from me. I have my array of native snakes, venomous and non-venomous, on the table. Not all of them. I have business cards. If you need snake relocation or pet sitting, give me a ring or give me a text, and uh, I'd be happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? I will answer all of your snake and animal related questions. Anything that has to do with animals and lager. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you for coming. We enjoyed this a lot. A lot.